Right, hi, I'm from um, from GNS Science, which uh, for people that aren't in New Zealand would be the equivalent of uh, the geological surveys in most part of the world. And the word survey would probably give you the idea that we've actually got quite a lot of spatial data that um, we want to make available uh, to, to public, to our stakeholders, and also internally to the, uh, the rest of the science, to, to for intercommunication with the science groups. Um, we have evolved. Um, JS Map Service is a, what, one way of doing this and uh, has made fairly heavy use of the open source, open source stack to do that. And just want to talk a little bit about what our, how we did it, what our learnings were, what uh, the choices that um, we made. It's coming back to the problem that I'm trying to solve, which goes back quite a while, is first off that we're wanting maps that can cons consume a, a wide variety of um, web map services. Um, Aggregation with other people, um, NOAA, DOC, other government agencies is incredibly important um, rather than copying their data all the time, but we don't have any role in saying what protocol they're going to use. A biggie was that we wanted the content uh, to be configuration driven. We don't want, it's like life's too short to be building a web application for every single map that we want to put out there. And very important associated with that is that the view that the, someone sees depends on what rights they have to um, the data. We wanted to put the science groups in control of uh, the data, which means putting appropriate controls around testing and the final you know, push the button to um, make it live on the web. But it has to be simple enough and easy enough for scientists to um, be able to um, manage. Version 1, version 2 were uh, configuration file driven. We jumped to database uh, for doing it, for, for, uh, for the latest version. Um, we wanted highly functional maps, not minimal maps. We want maps we can um, do pretty much a lot of the things that you do with a, um, a GIS. We wanted scientists to be able to add and remove layers, to be able to share what they're seeing with um, um, other people by just passing the URL. And the biggie was that we needed rapid publishing from, from projects which had hundreds of layers in uh, making up a, um, a map. Very important too was obviously, we're not doing this just for show, it was that we're dealing with data sets that aren't useful until you start doing querying on them and we wanted to support um, pretty high level of query. Most of the tickets that are sitting in the database are around querying and visualisation. And we particularly we wanted to be able to support um, queries based on not just the data that you're seeing on the um, screen, but on usually they have a mass of related tables, um, which can come from multiple data sources, which I'll just illustrate. Um, you may have um, your client which has got navigation which um, might be available through ArcGIS server with a definitive uh, note that it's sitting at um, NOAA. Uh, samples from uh, this cruise might be sitting um, in a sample repository, e.g. Um, scripts, um, which might be using WFS or pseudo WFS, where, where they still use the FS but there's no spatial. Uh, <laughs> And because you were on that cruise, you might have private unpublished data that's still sitting in the corporate database. And we wanted queries so that hide all of that from the uh, users and allow them to use all of, um, all of those available sources for um, querying and display. Um, an end result of a, a map is something that looks a bit like this. Um, so this is from uh, the Atlas of Petroleum Prospectivity. We've got the usual kinds of search by, you know, just touch a point, polygon searches, search by attributes, and um, searching um, by um, just a text search. The, all the menus at the top are um, also part of the configuration. You just set them up and you can see fair, some idea of just how many layers are sitting in this map, about 60. Um, when you query, you get results that uh, you can customise, export to CSV for doing other things with. We're busy looking at how we can um, change those exports to put them out to a Python data lens as another way of um, giving people quick access to um, results. 
and all the usual things that you expect on maps, be able to see where your cursor is in any, any of the coordinate systems, scale and all the other usual bits and pieces. I don't want to go spend any time really talking about the, the map applications. Um, we have quite a number of some of them public facing, the most well known, oops, um, the most well known is um, Petroleum Basin Explorer. Um, tens of maps, um, many hundred layers, thousands of documents, but it's free registration uh, to get into it. Uh, but more recently we've got the Antarctic um, Geomap and the uh, Zealandia map, which are both public, more, almost all the data is basically public and um, readily available um, if you want to, uh, to look at those. They're quite small at the moment. Expect Zealandia to explode in the amount of con uh, data content um, over the next few years. What I do want to talk about is how we made this possible and the architecture. So uh, this is broadly the architecture where we start with your clients, which can be the full-blown one with the uh, menus all pre-configured, but they could also be a um, embedded, just to be a map or map plus um, legend embedded in another um, HTML page. Everything they do is going to be fetching stuff from the um, map service um, through the a a um, REST API. And also, they will be fetching JavaScript and HTML templates directly from that. The advantage for us is that by um, doing uh, running, pushing an update through to map service, we're effectively updating all of those clients um, simultaneously. Um, well, the clients once uh, will then be requesting, you know, particular maps or whatever, and they will go down to our database where the, um, uh, adjacent objects will return a view appropriate to um, their rights uh, back to the client which um, then is going out to the various web services um, out on the web to um, go and um, actually display the data. We've got a central authorization server to manage um, rights and of course access to corporate database. Um, and we have a geonetwork server to support um, associated metadata and um, a full text indexer um, to um, provide the uh, full text for provide for full text searches. Um, and of course right at the bottom we have the administrator um, which runs an associated app which builds, manages and builds all of those and um, so with appropriate admin rights our users, group of science groups can go in and fill all the content, add more layers, um, control behaviours, etc. Going into more detail about the open source choices, because we did drive this on open source. The last big rewrite was 2016, and so architectural choices that we made there um, date back to then. Maybe we'd make different ones now. Client-wise, we jumped for um, Angular for many reasons, but um, certainly the, uh, the template ability to uh, instantly include templates were great. Leaflet JS, we first version ones two were open layers, but we jumped to Leaflet because of its nice plugin architecture. Um, it supported our target services pretty much straight out of the box, and in particular, vast amounts of people, as you are well aware, are publishing their data through ArcGIS server, and we wanted basically first class access uh, to that data. Um, and in Leaflet, that yeah, their Esri plugin is um, very well supported. Um, and wrapping all this inside our map service binding which abstracts the layers and abstracts the queries which allows us so that if we've got some new kind of beastie that we want to uh, plug in then um, uh, it's, it's relatively straightforward just to write the um, um, appropriate uh, uh, methods to do it. Back end, we've got ArcGIS server but for most of the stuff that's involved in this kind of publishing, the, uh, the stuff is going out to GS Server of Postgres. Um, we could have an entire conference on the anti-Meridian. Uh, a certain GIS provider assured us in 1987 that they'd have problems fixed in the next version. I think the story's still the same. Um, but the advantage of the open, open source was that 
Uh, we could fix the problem ourselves by just ripping into the source code and uh, pushing in a, um, a pull request, or we could actually just go and pay someone else or uh, the, a lead developer to go in and give us a spherical earth, thank you very much. Um, and we've done both. Um, performance was fine with thousands of layers, whereas um, our GIS server manager gets a little uh, leery when you say, oh, there's 600 layers here. Um, and of course, we appreciate the price for Postgres as opposed to um, Oracle Spatial. Um, Apache Solar is what we use as our full text engine, and I have to say that we just use it because that's what we've always used. I uh, haven't seen a good reason to, uh, to change it. H2 is what we use for our embedded database. It's embedded, which is what we wanted, performant. Um, I suspect that um, if I'd made the decision today, I, knowing how this thing has evolved, I'd have gone for Mongo. And there's every chance that version 4 of uh, this, we will make the jump to, uh, to Mongo. It's something I'm actively looking at. Geo Network, well, it suited our management because it allowed a uh, tightly controlled management of the publishing workflow. And from my point of view, it's very easy to provide links to um, the metadata and the backward um, links for, um, for, for searching. This. If the layer is found through Geo Network, then it happily jumps to um, references into our Geo server and into um, our applications. This is I, not brave enough to try doing live demo of our admin interface uh, navigating the um, uh, VPNs necessary to get to work. So. These are just screenshots just to give you a flavour of how the configuration um, is operating. Um, so this is just a view of a library, all of its um, layers organised in a hopefully easy way. And uh, this is an example of a configuration of a layer, which is a, in this case is a primary just coming in through WMS. And we just set up the usual bits and pieces about um, how the thing's going to be managed for legend. You can set up much more complicated legend options with a, um, a JSON descriptor there if need be, links to URLs for um, downloads and um, uh, metadata, and just how tooltips work, how different styles that you might view the data uh, are, are set up, metadata links. If there was a 3D version, that would uh, be a URL that fired up a 3D model uh, to, to, uh, to look at it, override the um, SLD for the um, uh, rendering. And this is just setting up the fields for display, which is all pretty straightforward. Um, we control who can see that field, um, how it's presented to the user, whether it's available for attribute-based search, text-based search, a whole syntax on how to um, visualise that primarily for creating links, uh, hyperlinks um, to the um, system and, and access to, uh, to that link as well, and usual hints. Uh, but up the top here there's also, this one is indicating this one has got a data viewer. A data viewer is a way or where is, 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 is an object that we create for managing linked tables. And um, I'll show you a bit about how that's configured shortly. And for map, for creating a map, then it's pretty much choose a library, find a layer, override some of its defaults, add it to the map, and over on this side, arrange your um, layers and groups and so forth, however you want the thing to be presented to the user. Um, How do, we, how do we deal with data that's um, sitting with the related tables? This is an example of a data viewer. Over here are all of the different tables that are associated with the spatial object. In this case, they um, are all JDBC links, but if um, they were different, then we can set up an um, individual connector. Um, the basics of this is obviously how do we how, how do we select it, which will obviously be different dependent for JBDC or WFS or AGS, which we, they are the three that we support, and very similar to the rest of it, how we could display the fields. If something's got a data viewer associated with it, then we um, are able to see all of these set up and do form-based 
um, filtering to uh, set up the query. And you get the results back in a data viewer like this, which again allows you to look at the individual data. Whoops. Look at the individual data and um, yeah, potentially export it all out to Excel for um, further analysis. Um, the final bit I really want to talk about is the publishing workflow because how do we do this hundreds of layers? And here we want to put out a sing out to a product called Geocat Bridge, which is not open source, not free, absolutely incredibly high value. Take an ArcGIS MXD file um, and it will move data to Postgres, publish the layers, including translating the styles into SLDs um, to GeoServer, push the metadata through to GeoNetwork, all with one button. In practice, you might want to control that process a little bit more, but um, for all that, you can, you can put, this put, put out one of these things incredibly quick. Um, and then we have some Java code which analyzes the MXD, emits a JSON that the um, thing can configure for putting up for the purposes. And um, uh, we're looking at doing a QIS version. Geo Geocat Bridge is also looking at doing a, um, a QGIS version. It's worth it to my mind simply for QG, the Geocat Bridge to my mind is worth it simply for the translation of styles. The unsung hero would be the Serenity um, testing um, framework that uh, we we're very late comers to, but now that I've got into it, my goodness, it makes life easier um, with Cucumber. And the oil in the wheels that make all of this possible, of course, is an exposed API. And, and um, so the sheer advantage of um, building things with an API allows all of this kind of fun to happen. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Is, are there any questions for Phil? We've got quite a few minutes. Yep, one up there. Um, hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm curious. You said you are sending queries to multiple databases. So how do you how do you split queries up between them? How about badly? <laughs> <laughs> we take a rough guess as to uh, what's going to be the most efficient uh, way to do it and it forms a series of um, inner joins um, as, as it um, comes back. Um, I would not say that this was the most performant part of our application, um, but on the other hand, compared to doing it by any other method, it gets you the data incredibly fast. Ah, cool. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Phil, I'm interested in how the metadata flows across it. One of the uh, amazing things is how often I download data and no metadata comes with it, particularly the publishing date and sources. So. If I download some data, I don't get an XML file with it normally. Um, metadata is a case of um, sitting there with a large whip. <laughs> People want, scientists on the whole want their data out there for their users, for their public. And um, I pretty much say, yes, when you've got the metadata. <laughs> um, the, the normal flow for the, for the data is that they would create that in whatever tool suits them, I, I prefer the ArcGIS one, um, but whatever, whatever floats your boat by and large. Um, we pull them down in, as MEF files, we have Python scripts that run over, dolly them up, bring in um, links to the GeoServer images, and uh, then do a big bulk upload. But of course, Geocap Bridge, if there's metadata available with the data, will do all that for you. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> Got time for probably one more. <coughs> right, might wrap it up. One. This one up there. Okay. Oh, Hi. 
Um, so I'm interested in the fact to you about how you engage with the scientists. Now, scientists aren't the best communicators. So I'm just wondering how you manage turning what the scientists might want to put in as sort of label names and layer names into something that's meaningful to the users. Um, there's a real mixture of that. Um, quite a lot of this is, is user driven. Uh, they're telling us what they want. Um, and besides from that, um, there's the usual interactions that go on, internal review, um, m m me looking at it, showing it to you, showing it to selected users um, with a with a login, and, um, and then final publishing. But um, a lot of the formats and so forth are coming through with 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 because users want them. <laughs> this is supplying what they need.